Greetings, YouTube. This is Fragments of Memory, a.k.a. the Armchair Philosopher. Um, I'm in route to work today, but I was on the public train system here in the STL talking to some of my um, constituency, so to speak. Just turning that there for you in a minute. Um, my constituency, I was talking to this gentleman. We, we chop it up about books and literature and the black experience. And one of the things that I was talking about was I remember... Back in the day, I used to go to this thing called Legacy Books and Cafe. This was kind of spoken word, dine-in, bookstore, kind of a black-owned bookstore with a lot of Afrocentric energy going on there. And anyway, I just joined the Fahami movement, which is, was sort of a pro-black organization. It was a movement which taught black self-actualization and black cultural awareness and appreciating your history as well as trying to take what you got in the history and bring it to the present. So one of the things that I noticed in the spoken word circles, just like you see in church, you still had a pimp out in the in the in the social in the in the conscious circles. You had the brothers that was wearing locks, you know, the brothers that smelt like Blue Nile and Egyptian musk and burned incense. It could tell you all the pro black authors and the pro black literature and all of that. But they were the biggest womanizers around. They would talk about respecting the feminine principle, but these brothers were just as promiscuous as the pastor in church who could quote you the Bible backwards and forwards. It just seemed like it was a whole other hustle. Well, anyway, I, you know, I was talking with the brother as I was reflecting back on that past time in my life, and one of the things the brother said was, Oh, you know, this is a ratchet righteousness. So that's kind of a term I'm, that, he, that he spoke to me. And I'm like, yeah, you know, ratchet righteousness. And I recognize that that seems to be a big thing in the black community. So, or in any community really, but I, I see it in the black community. Even the things that are supposed to uplift us, to empower us, to encourage us, seem to only promote... Again, you still have the elements of promiscuity. You still have the elements of opportunism. Uh, there's that there's that Metro Link sound. But anyway, there's there's opportunism, there's cronyism, there's nepotism, there's money laundering, there's greed, even in the things in this philosophy that tells us we're not supposed to have. So for me, being a young man at the time, I was in my early twenties and I just escaped let me use that term loosely, escaped the church, so to speak. I.e., I walked away from Christianity. I walked away from the Bible as far as it being the Word of God. And basically what I ended up doing was embracing this more Afrocentric, conscious... Let me put that in the... In the that conscious mentality. And it caused... I would look at my family kind of sideways when I initially did it. You know? And there's that damn announcement again. <laughs> but basically, I would look at my Christian family kind of sideways because I had gotten into this new knowledge. So it bred a lot of arrogance in me for a bit because I had all this information and I was learning the history of religions and all of this. And the reality is I was still in the same situation. I mean, at the time I was even unemployed, wasn't working. So again, going back to being spiritually minded but no earthly good, and I think that's something that people really need to look at, too. But, yeah, if you're going to, I think right is right no matter where you go. Now, I'm not saying all religions lead to God, but what I am saying is if you follow something, follow that love. Just follow it and be respectful of it. And yes, we fall short. And yes, we don't. We don't follow the, the tenets of any faith or philosophy perfectly, but we should always be striving to, to, to get to that point. We should always be striving. And I think that's what people miss the boat on, and people miss what, they miss that boat. So, you know, don't be the ratchet, righteous person. Or don't think you can hold around and then all of a sudden be like, but I'm still a good, clean individual. No, you're not. So the first thing is, hey man, take those, those teachings, those philosophies to heart, and put them on the inside, and then make sure, oh yeah, 
this is what I need to start doing and keep going over and over it again until you implement it into your life. Or because it's in your head so much, you will start automatically implementing it into your life. Well, that's my two cents. Um, and of course, I'm saying it first to myself and then I'm saying it to you at the same time. So peace and have a good one.